welcome to the Shoot It Straight podcast. Welcome everybody to our show. It's been uh, a few weeks since we've made one of these. It's kind of fun. Yeah, but again, to the untrained, or they don't know. Oh, they don't know. Yeah, it's only a one week break for them. It's just we took the, technically this week we took off. The, the week that we're recording is mm. our off week. It's holidays. People, I've been getting a couple messages from people that have caught up to older episodes. People yeah. kind of detach a little bit, which we encourage. And we were traveling. So happy new year, everybody, because this is going to be our January episode. Maybe it'll go. Maybe this one will be the first one. Maybe not to be determined. But yeah, see, I think I think my brain just functioned as like a, we're doing this today and this will be li- like people will actually hear this like tomorrow. Sometimes that's, that's how my brain works. Well, I like that we, we were in the <laughs> beginning. We kind of had a, we were a few weeks out. I, I like being a little bit more current because like podcasts are more like radio. They kind of are. We talk about things sometimes in the present in the season and things like that. So sometimes talking about things and then not publishing till three or four weeks isn't always my favorite. And I feel like the only reason you just said radio was because when we were driving back from Maryland, we were listening to XM radio. Dead ass. I'm like, <laughs> this I'm, is what's in the truck is XM radio. I'm in like a Y2K. It's funny. I also was just messaging. The time is so weird. And I think this time of year is so different than any other time of year, but I was just messaging with, I love this girl at the Tulsa Vintage Co. Shout out to her. She gave us, she helped us with our outfits for the holiday party we went to, mm-hmm. which I don't think we talked about that on the podcast, but we were sunny and share and she crushed it. She helped us so much and was wonderful. And I'm going to a Jaw Rule concert tomorrow night and Ashanti. And that's very, she was like, is it 90s? And I was like, I think like more like early 2000s. And she was like, oh, why 2K? So, yeah, we're all just kind of in the simpler time. I'm just, I think that's how it it goes. I think when you grow up, you just live in the time that you were kind of like in your heyday as like a teenager or, you know, in school, college. And that's just like your era forever. Oh, I'm I'm all about the 90s. I love the 90s. I know you love the 90s. And maybe some people like, yeah, that more than others. But, you know, like with like music and things like that, like nobody is like, you know, 40 years old turning on pop radio and like loving what what they're hearing i don't think i don't know too many people that are like yeah only modern day times yeah (laughs) i feel like especially now and i was just talking to a friend and we were talking about i don't know there's like that there's several memes about this but it's like you know you're 32 33 35 years old and it's like we've been through like 10 world wars and a the plague and like (laughs) that we've been through like so many things and we're not even that old our millennials have lived through a lot Mm-hmm. so yeah i don't know time has just come up a lot t- yeah. today and like this week well i think it happens like around the new year it does it does it's like always a time of re- like reflection or and i don't know too if it's kind of like time slows down a little bit this time of year so we all have time to just like maybe reflect a little more mm-hmm. be with our thoughts yeah squats with his thoughts and then it's my birthday so it's always it's my Your reflection birthday. time it is a ref- i reflect on my birthday too it just it's a feels it, it feels different than this yeah, it feels different. So you're, yeah, you're. That's kind of interesting for you because yours falls on the same time frame. For me, it's like when fall comes and I feel like the change of the seasons shift. Mm-hmm. But for you, yeah, I can see where like that's kind of the, a cool thing where you can kind of like start fresh on the new year and yeah. it's your birthday. That's cool. Yeah, I'm getting older, but you know, talking to your brother over the holidays, he was telling me about he's a what is he like a Gen Z or something? He's 26, 27. I consider him Gen Z. Yeah. yeah. So he was talking about Gen Alpha and all their lingo and like all this kind of stuff. And I was going to say Alpha is the new because he's yeah. not young. No, he's, young not, he's not them. And uh, okay. so he was trying to tell me all about their lingo that I totally didn't understand. And I think people that are listening to this that are millennials and older, like, you know, it's just like, I don't understand this. They're like no cap and bussin and all this shit that makes zero sense. And I'd remind your brother that, you know, I'll be 40 in a couple of years. So um, I, this is far I, i'm far removed from this stuff well fuck i mean they don't gen <laughs> alpha a, a i didn't even know they had a name or what their name was b they don't even know how to talk to each other yeah um but the, these, they don't have to these kids are yeah i don't like i don't know I'm not trying to offend anyone out there but y'all need to learn how to socialize in real life and make eye contact and things like that that's right 
But today we're talking, we're doing uh, Q and A's though. This is our Q and A episode. Q and A episode. So um, Erica writes in the show notes. So if you guys want to skip ahead to the question you asked or the um, topic you want to hear about, you can do that, or you can listen to all of them, which is what I'll encourage you to do. Yeah, these are my favorite show notes to do because they're usually like pretty straightforward. Like they're easy to keep organized. I usually, um, I'm usually pretty elaborate on the other episodes that are not Q and A meaning like I do every couple of minutes if we shift topics I will timestamp them but for these I just kind of keep them in their little question one question two question three question four yeah. and so we we typically do four questions I think we're going to stick with that we've been loving the and gotten good feedback too on like the 20 to 25 minute episodes so we're going to kind of keep going with that too obviously we're not restricting ourselves on a time but we're trying to stick to that generally speaking yeah we're on our house we don't we don't pay by the hour yeah we don't know I'm, 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 not, I'm not saying that i just think like we're not gonna be like oh time's up gotta stop the show like that's not yeah where we're that's where we're also not a radio show and we don't have ads that we need to run and all the bullshit that goes along with that but i mean i guess i'll i'll kick it off because oh, we're gonna go is, right inside my favorite one that well I put this up is there. this question is for you for sure um Okay. Let, let me go ahead and just you have to ask one. the question because <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the question is. So this isn't actually the question that was asked. This is like basically the root of the question that actually is asked all the time, if that makes sense. All so right. Like, well, ask the question because that will so, help so people. The, the, the question is basically just like, is do I need to do golf specific exercises or a golf drill? All right. And this comes from when people ask me all the time when I post exercises on Instagram, and again, we've told you guys like the Q and A comes from mainly from social media. But um, so it's always like, hey, do I do both sides of an exercise, right? Like, so like I'll post um, something that does look very like golf specific, like you wouldn't see a normal person in the gym do some of these things, right? Like some of this like banded rotation, um, punch through type stuff. Um, and people are always like, do I need to do both sides? And the answer is always yes if it's in the gym. So. That's where it comes in. So I kind of evolved it into this actual question because like the root of the question is that that person's actually asking is, is this like something that's just, that's just going to help my golf swing or is this something that's also going to help my body too? And we need to make sure there's a difference. Okay. So the question also, I want to ask it another way so we can get super crystal clear. There is just what's the difference between a golf drill and a golf specific exercise? Right. Okay. So, and hopefully I don't confuse anybody out there or confuse myself in, in the explanations of this, but basically the, the two, the way we would look at it is you would do something in the gym if it will enhance your athletic capabilities, enhance your body, right? If it's only going to enhance your swing, it should be done on the range or wherever you're practicing with a golf club. That yep. makes sense so far? Yes. Okay. So by just adding in an element, say like, just taking the drill that your coach gives you, right? Like my, my coach gives me a drill. Here's what I do with the golf club. Now finding some fancy way to turn that into an exercise is not exactly what you're looking for. because It's a very golf specific swing drill <clears throat> with me so far, mm -hmm. because when we're enhancing our body, right? We have to overload our system somehow. We have to get this external force. We have to get a, some type of resistance that we're getting to get our body to respond and the stimulus that we want to make it better. Right. So if you are just going to take this drill that your coach gives you, use a band, you're probably going to take away from what that drill was doing initially. And you're probably not going to do it as good with this band as you would with the golf club, nor are you probably giving yourself enough stimulus from that band or whatever to make your body like actually adapt and change to it. So you end up just kind of in no man's land here in the middle where you're not really doing a great swing drill. You're not necessarily doing anything that's going to make your body better. So that's where, you know, a lot of these people, they start doing all these things in the gym that mimic a drill, but we should really just focus on things that are actually going to make our body better in the gym. So like if it's an exercise that's going to make you more powerful, if it's going to increase your rotation, just make you more mobile and be able to turn better, do that with both directions. Do all those on, the, on um, their individual sides. A golf coach is not out there, and I've had a several at this point in my life because we've moved around a lot, uh, not because I just change them all the time it's because we moved but they don't tell you to swing left-handed right the drill is always the golf drill on one side the exercise should be done on both sides yeah I mean I think that was a really good explanation I think can I add like another way of just explaining it to, to yeah or, I, I, would, I would appreciate that or maybe like, I'm, another I'm, way of hearing it I think you can really even simplify it more and just think about what the goal 
is to define whether it's a drill or an exercise. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, a, a drill of any kind in any sport is to get you to improve at a specific skill. Right. I would I would vote that's the definition. I'm not a sports coach, but like that's pretty much what drilling is of, mm -hmm. in, in sports. Um, your tip maybe you're doing like even in tennis, it's just like you're you're repeating one thing. Maybe you're doing it overly extreme, right? Because you you have an, a, a certain tendency maybe to hit to the right all the time. So you really want to exaggerate to the left. The goal is not to play your best tennis. It's to literally exaggerate, 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 whatever. But that, the skill is, you know, working on the, your swing pattern. Right. Sure. Golf, you know, golf is the same way. Like all, all sport, a lot of sports are very related. So this, it's just more about the goal. The right. goal of a drill is to perfect a skill. And you can look at certain exercises as skills too, but really exercises are, it's to get your, like you've been saying, um, an improvement more on your, your body. And typically right. we're trying to become like balanced on both sides and all of those things. We don't want to neglect one side of the body versus the other. Right. Is that like, that's just another yeah. way maybe of thinking about it for people that are like out there, maybe getting a little bit confused. Yeah. I think that you did a good job of, explaining it though too and i think you said the word that i probably didn't say that i should have right it's skill like right like yeah if, if if your coach is giving you a drill with the golf club it's developed the skill right yeah. like my, my my exactly you had exactly what my issue was my issue was that i sliced the ball so what is the drill the drill is to hook the ball literally right like that's yeah. what he was trying to get my coach was like here i want you to hit these like nasty hooks yeah exactly. to get you to straighten that out right like that's so the it drill. is the same as tennis yeah now if you are lacking like hip mobility Right. right. Like we can do that in the gym and right. you do that on both sides. Like yeah. you don't just do it on your swing side. Like it's, you know, well, hips, we use our hips on both sides, no matter left or right handed, but it's you, so you important hips, to do both sides. And here's why, like, look at like my dad just had a knee replacement, you know, and his, his trainer sounds his um, PT, whatever sounded like pretty decent, actually like hearing him talk about it and hearing him articulate, like, you, you know, don't limp too much. Don't overcompensate on the other leg now, like be, because it is so important that even if you are stronger on one side, it doesn't mean you don't work out that other side. Like the body doesn't work in silos in that way. Mm -hmm. It will weirdly overcompensate if we don't perform on both sides. Right. Um, and one side will always be better or less mobile or whatever, or different than the other side. But that's why we do both sides right. because you want to keep things as equal as possible. Yeah. I mean, um, go golfers are always going to be in, um, you know, other sports too, but like you're, you're going to be imbalanced. Like, you, right. you know, you take way more, you're not going to go out there and swing left-handed as many times as you do right-handed to overcompensate for it. Right. Um, I mean, when you do, um, speed training with like over speed clubs, there, a lot of them do have you do, um, opposite side swings. But that's for like a totally different reason. It's, it's to help you decelerate, which is something you do without even realizing it in your golf swing. Right. Cause we don't just, pitch our club down the fairway after we swing right we actually decelerate it and pull it behind us in a in a follow-through in our backs in our you know in our follow-through um so we can do that when we're doing over speed training but we don't you know just do one side in the gym yep so yeah that, that's that's so that's the question it's it's always like if i post it and just to give you guys a little insight i usually post the side that i do the best on when i put it on instagram <laughs> like yeah i have a dominant side it looks better if i do it to this side because i'm trying to show people like the perfect you know the, the best example i can so i show like my best side yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know so um i tend you know like if i do if i show like multiple things in a row and i'm doing it all on one side people tend to think oh he must be a right-handed golfer because he's doing all this on one side Oh, interesting. Like, no, it's, it's either – it could be, like, where the camera's placed. It could be, like, where the lighting is good. Like, there's some – I'm just doing it for the video. Like, if, if that's in the workout, it's on both sides. Yeah, don't overcomplicate it, y'all. Just yeah. That's what, just in general life advice. Yeah. General life Do advice. Do both sides. <clears throat> All right, cool. Second one. Oh. Cross training for golf. Yeah. I, th I think this can go a few different ways. So, why don't you kick us off here? Well, is what's is the question? The, is, is the Should question... we be cross training for golf? There we go. That's the question. Should we be cross training for golf? Okay, I like this question. I'm going to take it in the direction of um, we kind of chatted about this before we got on air, but my short answer is yes. Um, this to me, I think of cross training in an in the way of periodization throughout the year. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I think again, I'm I'm really starting to really get into defining terms also. So like cross training for me means t- training in different periods t- throughout the year or different seasons. That's how I define cross training. Some people I think define cross training as like, well, I'm a runner, so I'm going to go bike. Like mm-hmm. this, just doing something else besides the sport that they're in. Mm-hmm. To me, that's like lackluster at best. It's just an excuse to do something else besides maybe doing too much of the same thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I'm biased to that opinion because I used to do those types of training too. And there's certainly value in doing different modalities in general. But for the purposes of cross training for golf, I think this is very relevant to the conversation we had last episode or two episodes ago about um, off season. And like just how you're training differently maybe in the off season versus in season. And maybe it's not the exact same thing, but if it's winter, for example, it might be a really good time to crush and go really heavy or super high volume. Or maybe you do take up like a different sport. Maybe you are playing your indoor tennis more all of a sudden, or like you're working on your jujitsu because it's just indoor. Like seriously, like this is where it's like, you know, back in my endurance days, I would do more like indoor hit training classes. I started to ramp that stuff up because maybe I wasn't outside in the cold as much. Mm -hmm. This is where you're just kind of like, because if I'm looking at it from a macro scale of, I know I'm going to be training year round because I am what we should absolutely be doing like different things for different seasons. And I think for golf, there's definitely, you can get into the more like specificity for golf, but like fuck this is where like maybe 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 you're maybe you're swimming indoors a little bit during the winter and like trying to get your endurance up like maybe this is where you're like looking at the goals that you have for yourself like we just had a member join and she wanted to be able to be uh, have a little bit more endurance for her game like to be able to play more throughout the week and like not just maybe shoot six or nine holes but be able to walk 18 a couple times a week so yeah maybe like that person is wanting to level up their um what am I trying to say? Their, their baseline endurance and just yeah. get better. So like, this is where I think it's a good opportunity to, to p- pick a few goals, one or two and focus on them like out of your regular season. That's how I define it. And that's where I would say like the answer is, is yes. If yeah. it's defined as, well, I'm just going to do CrossFit classes cause it's different. And like, eh, that's kind of like counterproductive to golf. Right. Like if we got into like all the specific different modalities, we could kind of go through a list, which we're not going to sit here and do, but that's where I would say, like, make it specific to what you're trying to work on um, and and try to go in that direction. Right. Yeah. What's yes. your hot take? Oh, I love it. I mean, so um, Owen, one of one of our juniors I've been working with for one of the Wednesdays, I guess I'm going to quit calling him a junior because I've been working with him for a while. He's going to. I know. Is he gonna, like a young adult now? Is he 18? I think he's, like, he's like he's a fr- <laughs> he's in high school now. But um, I mean, I was working with him before he was in high school. But anyways, he uh, he's playing like varsity basketball right now. Yeah. And I think that's awesome. You know, um, yeah. it's because he's developing skills that I mean, golf is like his his is his game. Like, I don't know. I've never watched him play basketball, so I shouldn't say that. But it'd be hard to imagine he's um better at basketball than he is at golf because he's really freaking good at golf but um so it's that's definitely something i love to see juniors do like get out there and and play more sports um because you just develop so many more skills too right like i mean ball handling shooting dribbling running sprinting um you know agility all all that great stuff that that he's getting and and just the you know being a part of a team is cool i was gonna say that yeah that's a whole different you get you get so well you know but but you know just the skills of playing basketball is awesome and and it helps um it'll help him play golf too without even like you know it's nothing like the game of golf just because he's becoming a better athlete right like that's 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 again kind of goes back to that question one like anything that's going to make you a better athlete will also make you a better golfer too um now adults we really don't have like have that right like i'm I'm not going to go join like the rec basketball league although some guys do um, that's just not what I'm going to go do. So yeah, I mean, trying to find out like new things to do. Like I'm going to take up boxing this year. Like I already ordered some gloves. I've, we've done boxing before. I really enjoyed it. Um, that'll be kind of like my cross training, right? It's going to be, it's going to be great for golf as long as I don't break my wrist hitting the bag, um, uh, which knock on wood, I might end up doing, but, um, so like, you know, that'll be very, that'll carry over to golf. There's a lot of rotation, power, conditioning, all that fun stuff. So I definitely think mixing in something like that, um, is, is great if you have the time and, and, and things. Um, now in our program, I do put in a lot of stuff, right? Like there's a lot of like jumping laterally, there's box, there's, um, 
ball slams. There's different types of lunges that we're putting in more rotation. So like, you know, people are getting exposed to a lot of stuff just doing our programming. Yes. But yeah, if they, if they want to, you know, um, do something extra, like, you know, do another sport, I highly encourage that. I think that would be great. Yeah. I think that was a really good way to, to answer that actually with with the, with the sports, but yeah. And again, our programs do a really good job of doing a lot of variety in general too. And I think Mm -hmm. I encourage people when you're doing your workouts, like if you're a nerd like me, but it's like, think about the, how things do carry over in your day to day life. Once you start training enough, you can really start to be like, man, this makes this so much easier. I can't think of an example like off the top of my head, but it happens to me all the time. I'm just right. like getting up like we just got like my dad's truck or whatever we, that we just bought. It's so high up. And I'm like, man, I can like lift my leg up and step up here like nobody's business. And right. maybe when I'm 90, it'll be a little bit different. But I'm like, fuck, I want to be able to do that for a really long time. There's no reason that I can't pick my body up and lift myself up into a truck. Yeah. I should be able to do that with my body weight. Yeah. So it's like, cool. I'm glad I really do those weighted stuff ups. Like, I'm really glad that I have, you know, like mm-hmm. there's just so much, this, this goes on and on and on and on and on. We're yeah. just, we were talking about being able to carry like multiple gallons of milk. Like those are things that, and I know that these things sound, maybe we take them for granted, but like, these are, there are so many things in day to day life that are just, they're just not hard because if you have a good, well-rounded training program, you'll be good. Yeah. I mean, and just like overall coordination, right? Like eye hand coordination, yeah. um, stepping up and down is, is part of it. And like, if you're playing another sport, I mean, I, I, one of my first like golf coaches, you know, cause my swing was ugly. Um, but I still like hit the ball really far and I still like played pretty well. Like I was single digit handicapper without any kind of like lessons. And he was like, man, he's like, if you didn't have such good eye hand coordination, I don't even think you'd hit the golf ball. Right. <laughs> you know? So like, and I developed that through like playing other sports, like not playing golf. Right. Um, so just think about like if you are a good golfer and you do play more sports and you develop more skills, it only is going to make you better. Yes. What's sex? Quick fix for injuries. No such oh, thing. I wish there was something. <laughs> well, I think we should talk about your injury. Because oh, I no. Think it's no important you're going to be... rat me out to our. No, I'm not ratting you out. I think it's important to talk about. It is. In the spirit of being authentic, you – well, this is also – you've had a chronic elbow thing since I've known you. From uh, powerlifting. It started from powerlifting, which I believe yeah. that's actually to be true because you had terrible sh- shoulder mobility. Mm-hmm. Your shoulder mobility is not the best, but it's a lot better. Mm-hmm. And you're also a guy versus me who's just a girl. A nimble <laughs> like a, little creature. Yeah. I mean, I just we just have <laughs> – I'm not going to act like I sit here and work on it, but like, I don't know. I have pretty good mobility. You didn't, and then mm-hmm. went, he- and then you did heavy squat. So I'm imagining that the, I mean, the added pressure of whatever was happening with your mobility in your shoulder w- went straight to your elbow, mm-hmm. care- taking on all that additional. Yeah, with hundreds of pounds on my back. Yeah, over and over and over again. Yeah, and what was funny? Remember, I got like a, I, I quit um, pressing for a little while because we thought, I yeah. thought it was like you know the an elbow injury. It comes from pressing something or you know rowing or some upper body exercise and it was the it was the back squat. Same the reason we think like oh my knees hurt cuz I'm squatting and it's like mm, probably not. Yeah. Like you know it's the same same shit, you know, but this yeah. was a long time ago and then we've yeah. kind of unpacked it since then. I've learned since then how yes. how it all works, but yeah yes. that that was that was the problem. Yeah. Um, cuz lack of shoulder mobility was killing my shoulder or killing my elbow um, with a low bar um, then I had to mod- then I modified my squat um, yes. for CrossFit and so on and so forth. But yeah, so um, my left elbow, which if you're a golfer is typically not where a right-handed golfer would actually get golfer's elbow. They would actually more likely get it like on the inside of their right mm-hmm. elbow. Um, so it's not golfer's elbow what I have. Um, basically, can, can they see me on camera right here if I did that, if you guys are watching? So um, oh, can you see what's happening here? So my yes. elbow, my elbow hyperextends, right? That's what we call that. It goes past zero. It goes pretty far back so think about what happens when you go to the top of the backswing and I don't know exactly if it happens at the top of my backswing when I transition into the downswing or if it happens like after impact um, when I fully like release my my arm and my elbow but it basically just kind of cracks right like it right here in my elbow and it always has and it's always kind of hurt but um, recently I went out and I wanted to do a video for one of our partners for for the rip stick um, I wasn't very warmed up I know better than this, but I also think I'm invincible sometimes. So um, I went out in our backyard and I just started cranking away on on the on the ripstick, um, the weighted club, 
and there's nothing wrong with a rip stick. There's nothing wrong with doing overspeed training. You just got to warm up and lead into it. And I wasn't, and I just started cranking away on it to make a video. Yeah. Uh, well, talking about, you talked about that earlier. Just yeah. Like the reps of doing things for video. Yes. Yeah, so, sometimes it adds up. Yeah. It so when you do up. things just for video, like, you know, you don't, sometimes you like use lighter weights and sometimes you want to show heavier weights. And then like, if I'm swinging this club, that's meant to be swing, swung fast. I'm going to swing it fast. And, um, I went out there and just cranked away on it and, um, hurt my elbow, but that's not where it really went wrong. Uh, that was on like a Sunday we made that video. And then on, on Friday I went to, um, one of my clients or one of our athletes here, um, is lives in Tulsa and he opened up his own, um, indoor golf facility in Bixby called scratch. So if you guys are local, go check it out. Um, awesome. We like did like a long drive contest when I was there and I of course like couldn't let myself lose. Um, which I didn't, I did win, um, that particular day that I was there. Um, but I wasn't hitting, I, my club head speed was nowhere near where it normally is. And after doing so many reps, like with my driver trying to beat people, um, I've been in pain for like a month now. Yeah. Um, and I've had to go to physical therapy. Um, basically it feels a lot better now after going to physical therapy. So, uh, people ask about quick fixes for injury. The quickest way you're going to get a, a fix for an injury is you go see a physical therapist straight up and get them like working on you. That's going to be your quickest fix. And downtime. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, but I think when you have me immediate, if it's an immediate, if it's an acute injury, if it's an acute yeah. injury, if you are, if it's chronic, it's a little different, which yours is semi chronic, but it was acutely reignited. Oh, I, I really, I mean, this is, this is more than I've ever done. Yeah, I know it. you've been, you've been in pain because you haven't been golfing, which means you've been, but you've been resting it, but you've <laughs> yes. been resting it. That's what, that's what you have to do. And, and, and I think like, I was just talking to somebody about this yesterday, actually not related, but they were, they were sick and she was like, man, it's been lingering for weeks, but I worked out yesterday. And I was like, I just was, I didn't say anything, but I thought to myself, I'm like, bitch sit down like yeah. don't you it's not helping your shit's lingering because you're literally not letting yourself get better i mean this right. isn't like professional medical advice but it's real life like right. i was like i bet like if you just Chill knocked out. yourself out and chilled for three days which sucks like that always feels it sucks but it's like your your shit will get better like don't push yourself right. same thing with injuries it's like if the some if the thing that you know that you're doing hurts you probably just chill out for a second and let your body at least like give it let the inflammation come down and like recover a little bit yeah and yes number two slash one point one point oh whatever one one a definitely go see the pt right because they're going to be able to diagnose you pretty quickly with like by you know what did he assess you you spent you know an hour with with him after he adjusted you and did some soft tissue work i'm sure but yeah. In the beginning, like they're looking at how you're moving immediately. And then you can immediately be like, cool, what do I need to strengthen to correct it? Right. Because it's 99 times out of 100. That's what the problem is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the, the quick fix. And also that and the, the, but then part two is like there is no quick fix. Yeah, there, there is, is no nothing's going to be like going to be magic. And I think we all want to get better fast. But if you do the things like resting and doing your mobility and your whatever your PT tells you to do the the few weeks of that is way better than things just coming back over and over and over again for years. Like right. that's the part where it's, that's not worth it. That ends up taking a lot longer. Yep. And I think, you know, definitely if you look at, um, you know, trying to prevent the injuries too, it's like you always yes. need to like yeah. make sure your technique is right. Yeah. Like, you know, um, and you're properly warmed up and, and you're addressing your mobility issues. Like, I think obviously what, what, what started this, what, you know, but it wasn't as bad as until I really went and did the long drive thing on Friday. Um, it was like, I pissed it off. Like it was only a few swings with that, with that weighted club and it was okay. Um, uh, wasn't. And, and then when I really went and started swinging away to, to out drive people, um, I probably changed up my technique, like to adapt to like compensate for this, for this injury that was going on. And just ended up making it worse because you know I was, I was threw my technique out the window and I just well, started gripping and ripping that's it. The you know, competition. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. always when people. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the point of competition. You're yeah. pushing your body more than it can than than it than it would go in like a training session. Yep. Always. And I did that. So. Well, you I did the competition, price. right? That's fine. Yeah. Final question: Nutrition related, kind of. All right. Sure. So, how much of a s calorie surplus? Do I need to be in to build muscle? Okay, so we this one got a lot of traction. We answered this question kind of in a Q and A in December. 
Um, different. I think it was asked a little bit differently. This question comes up a lot, though, so I'm glad that it's come up again because I encourage people to go back and listen to that episode. I think it was one of our best episodes ever, actually, especially that particular question. I think I unpacked it for like 15 minutes. We talked about like the phasing of macros. It was so good. But let's mm. talk about this. For one, you're you okay. <laughs> to be to 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 gain muscle, we do need to be eating some food, right? The specific type of food that's important that we need to be eating that was protein. And I say that because you don't necessarily have to be in a surplus per se. This is for the person who maybe has never tracked their food, who maybe is new to training, who maybe hasn't tracked in a while or hasn't trained in a while. Maybe they've taken a few months, years off, whatever. If we're simply just changing our macro profile, meaning like we're shifting into eating more protein in general, maybe our calories are the same, but more calories go towards protein, you absolutely can change your body composition by doing just that full stop. And this is why I always, always, always encourage people to start tracking their macros when they're learning about their food intake because a lot of people under eat protein because it's kind of hard to get at when they're eating out or, you know, people mm-hmm. get full off of it or maybe they have to put more work into prepping it. It's a lot, you know, no, I'm not going to say it's a lot harder because it's really not, but it is easier to grab a bag of chips or a, mm-hmm. a packaged good of some kind, crackers, whatever, than it is to like maybe throw some chicken on or what have you, right? But protein is how you actually build muscle. That's what, I mean, you have to eat it. Our body doesn't make it. It's essential, right? We have to eat protein. That's amino acids. They get consumed and they make up our, our, our muscle. Mm-hmm. That's it. So you can't just... Even if you're even if you're strength training like a total badass and you're not eating enough protein, you will struggle to build muscle. So that's like kind of step one that I encourage people to look at first before like obsessing over like gains, 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 gains. But yeah, for the more like advanced athlete, maybe you're bigger too, right? You're starting to talk about like bigger bodied people that have already been training for a while. Um you know, I would consider myself in that class too of like women. It doesn't, I'm not talking necessarily you have to be 250 pounds. I'm just saying like, if you've been training for a while and eating your protein and doing the things you can start to put on, add muscle and add size with a, with a 10% surplus. It doesn't have to be a lot. So if you're eating 2000 calories, you can add on 200, 250 and start to really see gains happen. Mm -hmm. Um, the important thing to note though, is that we're making sure we're sending our body the muscle building signal. And that comes from strength training also full stop, right? Mm -hmm. So same thing as what I said before, only as it relates to training, you can be eating in this 250 calorie surplus, but you don't just put on muscle by eating in a surplus. Like that doesn't, that you have to put in work too, right? So if you're just adding calories and your, your body's just going to be like, cool, I'm going to put on some body fat, Mm -hmm. but you can mitigate the body fat that you gain by strength training and that is important and you do need to be doing progressive overload you cannot be doing the same weights for 20 weeks your body needs to be getting the signal hey this is a this is a muscle building stimulus i need to adapt and change that's why like people that mail it in on their workouts and they're just checking off the boxes and they're wondering why they're not getting anywhere they didn't hit a stimulus that was required for their body to adapt or change so it's not going to right full stop and i think one thing people have to be careful, myself included, is that if you, if you live in a climate like ours, like where we just started becoming winter, like, you know, a month ago, um, if you were much more active and then you're like, okay, I'm going to start bulking and you, and you add the 10% on, but you were like walking the golf course, you were doing more activities and things like that. You add that 10% on, but then all of a sudden you're indoors and like not moving around as much. What's the, what's the acronym? Your neat, your non exercise exercise activity. There we go. Thank you on that one. Um, so if that comes down cause you're less active, but then you added that 10%, but now you're like saying just to make it easy for math, like now you're doing 10% less. Now you've like kind of added much more calories than you need. And you're going to be in a really big surplus and then you're going to put on body fat and you're probably going to feel like sluggish and tired because you're consuming way too many calories and you need to be in. 
right? Would you say that's Yeah, I think that's really, I think that's totally accurate. But that's also why I force every client to be in maintenance. People skip. They always want to go to their bulk or their cut immediately with, and they skip the maintenance. Like you got to do the maintenance because you, because again, you could have some really great gains or changes in your body by just doing that. Same thing even Mm -hmm. with, with fat loss. Sometimes again, if I had a client that um, I've been coaching her for two years and last check-in, which was right before the holidays, she was like, I've been eating like all these sweets and craving sweets and I've been da da da. I haven't really been tracking and I've been traveling on the road. So her protein was really low for a couple of weeks naturally. Cause she just kind of knew she was going to, she was going to check out a little bit. We agreed that that was a good plan for her to just chill, eat the things, have fun. But after a couple of weeks, she was like, I'm so hungry. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you haven't eaten a lot of protein. You're that's, that's it. P- period. And there's no like, there's no emotion around it. Or this, she's she's like, it's the seasons. It's the it's the darkness. It's the it's the it's the stress. And I'm like, it's because you're eating like f- probably 50 grams of protein if you were tracking. And she mm-hmm. was like, light bulb went off. I've been tra- I've been coaching her for two years, and she's smart, and she she's she's. But I'm like, sometimes we just need to like hear that. But it's like, well, yeah. So you're gonna munch on the extra things and feel like shit and have cravings and be hungry because. You're not eating your protein like you normally are. And protein's mm-hmm. super satiating. Yep. And our body like wants it. That's why it's so wonderful. And so we naturally can stay leaner because we eat enough protein and we don't like snack on the other stuff. Mm-hmm. So again, like the so the maintenance thing is so important because our maintenance does change throughout the year. And so when people are like, well, I want to just jump right into this cut. I'm like, well, is your cut, you know how do you know, are you cutting at 1700 calories? Are we able to cut at 2100? Cause where's your maintenance at? It is so right. important to know that first versus just being like, well, I'm just going to cut a bunch of calories out. Like, no, same thing with, with gaining and trying to put on size, like find out where you're at first before you just jump into some random number, even that like a computer spits out, like there's no better way than knowing where you're at than just tracking your food for a couple of weeks truly and seeing like how things feel. Are you getting, are you feeling sluggish and bloated? Is it too much? Are you, you know, how much are you moving now? Mm-hmm. Change of jobs, change of seasons, change of like, there's so many things when we move, if you, when we lived in DC versus here, like, do we walk more? Like all these things, like it's mm-hmm. constantly, constantly changing yep. and how much we are walking and moving totally impacts that a lot. Yep. Oh, and one thing. So some of you guys know that I was in the restaurant business for a long time. And just so you know, if you go out to eat at a restaurant, you can't ask for a grilled piece of chicken. They will make it for you. It's not a big totally. deal. Yeah. They don't care. They'll do it. They're, they're going to charge you for it. That's It's a business. They don't care. They don't. <laughs> You're going to tip the server for it. It's a little button on their screen. They all have it. Yep. It's no big deal. You can ask for I've things done, without done, butter. You can ask for things dry. Yeah. Just know that, again, like things like chicken breast still taste better when we eat out because they are typically, there's a little extra little, little, little love, oil. A little love on them. But yeah, totally. we, we've gone out to sushi and I've, I've ordered a, a chicken breast. Like Yeah, you're like, I need to get my protein in. And like this is like a little higher you know, and a sushi I think is can be generally like can be a great choice, but it's also like just a little heavier in fat and carb. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes you just need to get your protein in. Yeah. It is what it is. It's no big deal. You it get is it. no big deal. And they only charge you a few bucks for it typically. That's yeah, you, I think depends it's, on where you go, but you know, it's worth it. It's nice it. to have someone make your make your protein for you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a good it's a good question. It's a common question. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, if you want like the full Monty on that question too, check out our last month's Q and A. Um, but that wraps us up for for our first episode, or maybe second of twenty twenty four. To be determined. But yeah, that'll do it for today. Okay. All right. Squat, are we signing off? Do we sign off, buddy? Make sure you give them all of our information. Where can they find you? He's nervous. <laughs> He's new. He's new. He's staring right at me like, shoot, mom, I don't know what to say. Yeah, check us out on YouTube. Um, CodyWestgotGolf.com slash links is where you can find our everything. Stuff. Our programs, our free downloads, our free trials. We've got our YouTube channels on there. All the ways that you can find us on the Instagrams and the socials, our website, our programs, all of it. Let's Hit go. us up. Free trials, all the stuff. Free okay. workouts. Well, Everybody have a good start to January. Say happy birthday to Cody, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.